My, my guiding principle, if, if you were talking to my graduate students and what they, they got, they, they would say my guiding uh, principle or my motto is, uh, how do you know when you've won? Are you having fun yet? Or have you put in enough head wall time? The, the work that I've been recognized for is in uh, the general field of parallel computing and particularly computer architecture. I've, uh, a bunch of the different uh, projects I've, I've been involved with that, I, that are being recognized, one starts all the way back in my PhD thesis where uh, I studied something called, now called parallel prefix and I needed to get out a special case just to show relevance and I chose a, a binary adder. Twenty years later, I had a fellow from Intel tell me that uh, my adder was now known as the Kogi Stone adder and was used in virtually all the Intel products. Totally unknown to me. Kind of the reason why I got into all these things, I mean if I go back all the way to when I was a kid, uh, I can never remember a time when I didn't want to build computers. And uh, when I was about 12, I remember one of the earliest memories that I actually have is of walking into town to buy my first transistor a CK722. And uh, my, my father was an electrical engineer who uh, w was an engineer with everything. He, he would look into why anything worked and uh, w would go fix it when it broke. And uh, I have the same uh, uh, genetic disposition that my wife calls the touch gene that uh, <laughs> has uh, caused problems at times. Uh, at uh, When I was in college, I had a um, uh, teacher who uh, saw me building my own oscilloscope after class one night and so he came in and totally rearranged my uh, curriculum to challenge me and I ended up going to the uh, IBM site that he had worked at before he came uh, to Notre Dame so that was pretty good. <laughs> Peter Kogi worked on multi-core before the industry even thought of multi-core and designed one of the very first uh, multi-core processors. But more importantly, he understood that the bandwidth to memory was going to be the limit in the future. And so he looked at putting processing in memory itself. And that architecture is now very relevant today, especially for processing big data analyzing big data, where you have to move a lot of data through the processor itself. Having the processor adjacent to memory, physically in the memory, makes this uh, very, very efficient. Most of my other work has been in computer architecture. I had a, uh, mostly for machines that went to solve a problem that uh, was too hard to solve with conventional technology. I was working for the Federal Systems Division of IBM at the time, so we had to build wacky machines for wacky environments. One of them was uh, the Execube Array, which was uh, back in the early 90s, perhaps the first chip to have multiple computing cores on the same die. And uh, we, we didn't do that in normal practice for another 10 years. And that was built because we were flying a, essentially a mainframe in a, uh, a big airplane and it was getting too hard to uh, program it for it to handle all the radar tracks it was tracking. So by building a very scalable chip, we were able to assign different cores to different tracks. Well, particularly looking forward, the biggest challenges in, in this whole area are uh, power, particularly energy of computation, memory, um, concurrency, the, the fact that we're, we're very soon going to have to build machines that have billions of operations going on at the same time and how, how we sort those out and, and guide those uh, is, is a real issue. And then finally resiliency, how do you keep such machines from uh, falling apart or making mistakes on you. Peter Kogi is really one of the pioneers in uh, computer architecture. Uh, Peter really helped define modern understanding of uh, pipelining. The things that have surprised me are that uh, there's continually new areas 
that I hadn't thought of before that are, are relevant to what I really wanted to do. And uh, that learning those new areas has, has been a lot of fun. I, when I, I remember in the early 80s when uh, uh, VLSI was just becoming uh, important, VLSI design was important, uh, having uh, some classes in, within IBM uh, to teach that. And uh, so I learned it and I ended up teaching it at our local state university and building chips. Today we recognize Peter Gogi for his contributions to the development of computer architecture, but also for a lifetime dedicated to the improvement of the computing profession. Ladies and gentlemen, please welcome the recipient of the 2015 Computer Pioneer Award, Dr. Peter Gogi. I, I think the IEEE Computer Society is an absolutely vital part of uh, the, our, our technical community. They, they perform uh, an increasingly valuable role in both uh, organizing and, and vetting the, the material that uh, we, we spend our time looking at, and, and more particularly, as, uh, as, as new areas emerge, uh, the Computer Society starts subdivisions and, and what have you to uh, focus on different uh, technologies. My loving wife of 44 years, a teacher and a librarian, has a motto, simple things are best. And I've come to agree wholeheartedly with her. Most of my accomplishments have started with the decision that the current technology was simply too complicated uh, either for me to understand or to, to actually uh, do something with. So, uh, in fact, it always amazes me the degree to which that some of the truly gifted people I know can handle real complexity in their head. Uh, yeah, my, my advice for uh, new, new people starting their careers in, in this whole computing area is don't limit your continuing education to the subject area that you feel really good at. Uh, you should study a little bit on either side. Find, you'll find things that are interesting and some, very often you'll find things that are so valuable that it will uh, enhance your ability to do the work that you want. Uh, furthermore, you'll very often find that they'll open up new opportunities in new areas that you wouldn't even have considered after your, uh, your formal education is done. So, uh, if I'm to accept this award, I, I feel I must do so in honor of all those other small pioneering groups who have built the really new roads to places we've never been before, often before we all realize that we may want to go there. So with that, I thank you. Uh, it, it clearly is an incredible honor, uh, particularly when you think about what it means to be a pioneer. Um, you, you think of people settling the West or, or what have you, dealing with um, not a lot of resources around to do things. And uh, while uh, that's the case, there are other definitions of pioneer uh, that turn out to be uh, perhaps more relevant. Uh, one in particular I found in the dictionary was a pioneer was a, a small group of people, soldiers for example, who uh, build uh, bridges and roads and what have you in advance of other larger groups of people. And that to me just seemed to be more relevant to me because uh, it's, it's not just one person, it's a small group. And what they're doing is doing something that prepares the way for larger groups. And, and I think uh, to me being called a pioneer and, and using that as a reference is what I think I'm most honored about. Mm -hmm.